Welcome back to us for our Power Hour. I'm here with Jake. Uh, Ryan's here with us uh, for uh, production value, but he may be uh, dipping out shortly. But uh, Jake, you know, an exciting, maybe a little bit, I don't want to say totally juiceless uh, Duke-Notre Dame game, because there were definitely some, <laughs> there were definitely some moments of heat. Uh, we saw uh, a little bit of uh, you know, some of that, uh, you know, uh, 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 friction between the two teams, especially the uh, recent history and uh, haven't met in the championship game last year. But uh, yep, uh, Notre Dame goes down to uh, Duke, uh, escapes with a 15 to 12 victory. Uh, I think figure, you know, for that game, maybe we just kind of just start and uh, give some initial thoughts. But, uh, you know, Fighting Irish, I think you've said it here. I, I won't give you credit about like two or three weeks ago. I think you pretty much were like, Notre Dame's the best team in the country. It's, uh, yeah. I don't want to say you, you just handed them the title, but uh, they're looking good. They're just, you know, uh, the way that they uh, yeah, just keep going on. Besides that Georgetown uh, defeat earlier in the season, essentially spotless uh, on the season. And maybe a little bit of questions on depth, and I'll definitely let you uh, elaborate on that. But, you know, an impressive victory by the Irish. You know, anytime you get to have, a, you know, a one versus two game and essentially keep the home team, you know, uh, chasing for, I want to say, like 80 90% of the game, uh, you know, got to – uh, come away with a you know a smile on your face and uh, you know i know coach corrigan wants more from his boys but yeah pretty good outing for the fire and irish uh, another victory and uh maybe uh, you know still a couple questions for the blue devils yeah uh certainly a an interest an interesting game uh the you know pockets i would say were both both teams felt like they had Kind of their moments, certainly far more for Notre Dame as they led for, you know, you know, I would pretty much from midway through the second quarter onwards. But I thought, you know, uh, after about um, the, what would I say, you know, if, when Duke led at 4 3, I, I thought Duke was in a a good spot. You know, it was a very deliberate game. There was not a lot of transition. The Notre Dame ride wasn't a big factor. Um, I think Duke had failed one or two clears, but it wasn't, it felt a little more un, 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 unforced errors um, from the Duke clear. You know, the, it didn't, it felt more like a Duke game, you know, kind of six on six offense, uh, defense, half court. Uh, and you saw that, I think, you know, in you know, the fact that Duke was ahead. It, it, uh, they were having some success dodging Notre Dame shorties. Um, and they were in, in a good spot, I, I would say. You know, I, I, it felt like, um, up, you know, up to that point. Um, and then, af, you know, once... Notre Dame kind of took Notre Dame really kind of immediately took control after that. Um, the, the Irish, you know, uh, I mean, Pat Cavanaugh had I would say one of the best games I've ever seen him play today. Yeah, uh, just dominated Kenny Brower. The point Duke had to change the matchup, put Henry Bard on him. Uh, Cavanaugh kind of posted he's had this is his ninth career game of uh, four plus goals. Um, only two. This only like he's never scored five plus against Virginia. Um, never scored five or four. Never scored four plus against Virginia. Never scored four plus against Maryland. Uh, scored it three plus, three times against Syracuse. <laughs> um, done it twice against Duke. But the time he did it against Duke was I think his first his sophomore year. I guess, but his first full year, twenty twenty one. The last time he did it was like over a year ago against Michigan. And but this was like when he's done it. Usually, you know, he, he he may have one dodge or two kind of the cage, but you know he'll do it off ball. This was all just you know, just beating Kenny Bauer to the goal. And after that, Duke's defense really started to kind of seem to cave. They were sliding when they you know shouldn't have. They were kind of creating some offense for Notre Dame, uh, and the Irish had the, kind of the big lead. Duke chipped away at it and chipped away at it, and you know, kind of your point about like the depth. We kind of saw again Notre Dame let a team back into the game in the fourth quarter. Yeah, um, this happened in the Maryland game. To agree, when Maryland was down, kind of what by four or five, and they got it to I think two, you know, three uh, somewhere around there in the fourth quarter, and obviously they closed that out. The Syracuse game last week was when we saw where Syracuse was really able to make it a game, and now here Duke comes from three or four down and is able to tie it up. Uh, but impressive the way Notre Dame was able to 
you know, close it out and get the W. They are, you know, clearly the team in control of the ACC now at 2-0 and with the head-to-heads over uh, Cuse and uh, Duke. Uh, them in Virginia seems like it'll be the game for, I mean, we'll have to obviously see Virginia's going to have to show if they can beat Duke. Uh, and I guess if you consider that as kind of Virginia's real bugaboo, um, then the Irish look like the team that's got the real kind of pole position to uh, take the ACC regular season. They're clearly in the box seat for the uh, number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, an interesting game, I kind of tweet this out, I think Notre Dame is the best team in the country. At least they're the most consistent. Um, I think they have the highest floor for sure. Like we always talk about, like, no, they're never going to beat themselves, you know? Like, it's going to take your A game to beat Notre Dame. But I really kind of get the feeling watching these two teams – it feels like they pe- both of them peaked last year. And does that matter? Like, no, it's a new season. It's, you know, but they feel, they both feel beatable. You know, certainly, I mean, Duke's, this is their third loss. But, you know, I, I watched Notre, you know, Notre Dame, um, like their, their defense in midfield. Duke was really able to exploit Notre Dame's defense in midfield at times. You kind of look at Notre Dame with these le- with these leads. Again, they're the best team. They're, you're gonna, you know, um, it, it's gonna be a, t- a really tough test to beat them. That, and I think you see that. Like when you beat them, it's it feels like you've kind of, you know, it. There are echoes with with them of kind of what it feels like to be kind of beat Maryland back in the day. Of like, man, it's like, man, like you just you had to exert so much effort into it. Um, cause they don't beat themselves and they're strong in every area, but like their defense isn't as strong as I think it's been in past years. Um, they, you know, compensate for the fact, for that fact, by the fact, Will Lynch is now like a 60% faceoff guy, or, you know, a high fifties. Um, Entenman feels a little, you know, not as, you know, kind of locked in as he was, you know, um, he still makes some great saves, but he's not as, you know, at kind of his peak. They just, they feel kind of a step they feel like they've come back to the pack. Um, and I think that has, you know, it does, it, which maybe isn't necessarily surprising, but it, when the season started, it was like Virginia, you know, has kind of lost some significant pieces. You know, they still look like a top three team, but they, you know, they feel like they've lost the most. With these two teams, it looked like, man, it's just kind of like running back, you know, like they just, they got everything in place. And I don't know, there's just, there's this feeling of that, you know, the floor is very high, but the ceiling, I don't know. I don't, I don't get the, the vibe that it's what it was um, a year ago. And I think that does make them beatable in a way where last year, like what was that quarterfinal, like Hopkins in that quarterfinal game didn't do anything wrong. And it didn't feel like they could ever get close. Like it was like, it's like they, they played a, they played like a really good game and it's like, yeah, like that's, that's about as, that's about as good as we could play, and we lost by four. And I think if you played that game this year, I think Hopkins' A game is like a one-goal game. Now, of course, does that mean they play their A game? No. Does that mean they win? No. But I think that shows you the, like, the difference in kind of where it feels, you know, this year compared to last. But, again, nonetheless, is Notre Dame, they're, you know, they're the, t- they're the top of the peak, the top of the pack at the moment. I agree with you with Duke, definitely. I feel like uh, maybe not identity, but there's just something it's, it's off. Weird. Like it, just, it, it doesn't. Yeah, it's it's what we said. It's, it, it's no, there's it's, no juice. I think you said it best like a couple of pods ago, where uh, well, the preview pods were like, you know, what you're getting when we're with Virginia. They're they're it's almost malevolent, mm-hmm. malevolent. You know, like kind of like a very aggressive. Like they're gonna come at you. Notre Dame. Just, I think of when they relentless, absolutely relentless. They have, uh, you know, these these two brothers up there that like love them or hate them. Like they are dynamic. They they they, they exude. Like, Virginia, Virginia is Virginia is like Ferrari, and Notre Dame is like a Mercedes. It's just like it's just peak. It's efficiency. It's just like every game, same yeah. same thing every time. And it's just I don't you don't we kind of think that's why we had that one pop. Like who do you trust? Like. Of those three, I trust those two a little more, like, significantly more than two. Yeah, like significantly. It's like crazy because, like, 
lineup wise, Duke's like maybe you know more mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know potent than both, especially now you know with Zawada. But uh, you know, I thought like they had something there. Bison really started to come alive there. Uh, have a little bit of uh, you know effectiveness towards the end, and just but it just never got once it got. Essentially, yeah, the, the Eric Dobson's uh, Dobson's goal to like kind of surprise goal, like, uh, uh, and from there, just like really Duke didn't have, yeah, it was right there. Yeah, it was 11 11. Dobson scored mm -hmm. with 657 left, and then Taylor hit some back to back uh, goals, and then you know, uh, you know, slow uh, scores to get it down by two, but then it's like a minute left in the game, so yeah, just like you never, and it's still like probably I give Duke like fourth or Fifth best odds. I mean, it depends on where you put like Hopkins. Like if you if you kind of shove him in that top three, uh, but uh, yet yeah, like it's just still. But I just like have no confidence that this. I'm getting a Duke squad that's dropping 15, and uh, you know every you know I just don't. I just don't. Uh, and then defensively, I think I give Jameson you know what he's done like uh, you know credit to for a little while. We thought he was like the best goalie in the country. I think defense as well is just kind of suspect. You, you, the, the, you know, the the Brower thing is con like was concerning. Like, I mean, if that's if that's if he can't like hold up, that's a problem. Now yeah. maybe it's one game, but if if it's if it's a if it's a legit like, I mean, because Pack Pack have I mean, look, he's very good, but I mean, of of the of the main guys you think of, he's the easiest to. Guard one on one. He's got other skills, but like guarding Schellenberger is harder than guarding Pacquiao. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know. I just uh, I think Duke should, you know, still get a home game. I just like, yeah. I mean, like if, of those three, like who could you see like a surprise lead eight, like a like loss? Uh, I, I think it would be the Blue Devils. Like, if, you know, I mean, depending on the well, matchup, but like, uh, that kind of energy, like there was, yeah, again, there was pockets of there was that little, you know, fracas uh, with Kavanaugh, you know, they, they, you know, everyone got like juice, they heated up. And then you could see the emotion, like uh, when they were kind of called back, especially from Dyson and uh, O'Neill when they were scoring. But uh, it's just, um, yeah, it's just a weird team feels like uh, kind of not, not walking on the eggshells, but just like, just, I just don't know where we're getting um, yeah, each game. So, um, you know, lost for Duke. Uh, yeah, so give them the chance to uh, come out of the conference, you know, top two. But yeah, you know, this they, they may end up being like the if Virginia. If, if Virginia, if there's any year Virginia is going to break this regular season, like heck, is is this year? <laughs> it's got to be like I feel like I feel like we, feel like we I, say I, this I, every we year. Do. We actually do, but it's just like I I really feel it. Like this I was like Lars should Lars should wear Lars should Lars should find Starja's like outfit from the last time. Oh yeah. And wear <laughs> just, just wear that identical outfit. Like, yeah, screw it. Just go full Oppenheimer. Get a hat. Maybe, maybe get a just, like, just go. We gotta talk. We gotta talk about Lars's fits at some point here. Uh, we, can go, we can go right to Virginia. We just kind of got them off on like kind of. I don't know. What uh, you want. No, yeah, dude. That's that is that's next. That is next week. Yeah, Duke's only got two games left. Feels wild. I mean, they played like, so yeah, many 15. games. Like, that's that's the thing with them is like. We talk, you know, we kind of always use kind of like the cake baking analogy. You know, it's like Notre Dame, you know, they do, you know, whatever you kind of want to, you know, there's things they can work on, you know, like, you know, their shorties, you know, I mean, I kind of have concerns with it, but I can see that, you know, like maybe they can figure some things out. This depth, you know, like these kind of fourth quarters, that's something you work on. They still got Cornell, they got UNC, they're at Virginia, then there's ACC tournament, you know. There's still time to kind of bake that that cake a little bit, um, you know. Duke, it feels like Duke. It's like it's even kind of over, <laughs> you know. I mean, like yeah, ACC tournament though they're in there, so you know. But yeah, it does feel like you know, damn, like it's just it. Uh, and I think that's often been a thing with them is like it, this that whole thing about with them, like you know, it's. You know, February Duke, and then they get better the season. Like, that's so far removed now. Like, they've been the team they've been for, like, last year. I know they lost to Jacksonville, but they were dominant pretty much from the get-go last year. Like, they were a great team from the start. 
And then these other years, though, where they've, we've kind of seen them, like, I throw kind of February out the window with this team. They play, The St. Joe's win has kind of grown a bit, look kind of impressive. Um, but other than that, their February schedule is nothing. You pretty much start with March. And the first time we really saw them, they lost to Penn. Um, like, what we see with them is tends to be what we get in this kind of recent, I guess, what, super team, I, I don't know if that's the right word, but like kind of era with, you know, these Duke teams, with Brennan and, you know, all these guys. Like, they've, the first impression has often been the, like, lasting one um, with them. So, yeah, I am, I am intrigued to see Duke, yeah, Duke and Virginia um, ne- next week, because um, it feels like we haven't seen UVA against, uh, I mean, UV, you know, we saw them against Maryland, um, but they have, of, of all these teams, I think they've played the, like, least number of games against up kind of representative up competition yeah. but we saw him against hopkins and that game was kind of back and forth you know, chaotic and hopkins uh kind of beat him out in the fourth quarter they looked like kind of peak virginia to a bit in the in the the maryland game um but other than that we haven't really seen it this last this virginia stretch man at duke at Q's, home to notre dame that's uh that's you know we're gonna i think you know learn kind of a lot about the Cavs. can you know what does their defensive midfield look like you know that we've kind of had some questions about Whereas UVA's midfield, you know, kind of, we talked about like I've talked a lot about the midfield coming into this game with these two teams. Um, I thought it, it what Duke's midfield, I think, had the better of it in the end. The problem was that their defense didn't hold, like their close defense, Broward didn't hold up, and that was you know a concerning, I guess, potential wrinkle uh, for UVA. The the positive, I think, you know, it seems like Shut seems to be kind of coming along a bit um, as kind of a new you know guy for them, and they yeah they. Destroyed Carolina yesterday. I don't think there's anything really to take away from that, aside from Lars breaking out his Dom Starja tribute uh, fit with the throwback Virginia lacrosse vintage sweater. It's a great sweater. I got it. And the the glasses. Uh, he's just he's just I hate, I, I, I hate how much I hate how much I hate how much I like him. He's I just genuinely good, do. you know. You got to just tip your hat to him, you know. Uh, I trouble in Carolina, man. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, it, there's nothing. There's nothing left to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm trying to get hyped up for next. You know, the the Q's next game is at Carolina, with March will be suspended, uh, um, <laughs> and they will be carrying the offense. You know, Petro, uh, Gate, like uh, you know, first time meeting each other since uh, you know. But yeah, just like just a, I don't know, uh, flat flat team, just not just. I don't really know what's going on with Carolina. Yeah, it's not. It's not I, am in, I am. I. I do kind of like find out from like the people who are like, "Man, UNC really like bad." Like you know, and, and kind of like there's. Like, I, I'm seeing like some like coaching kind of change, like talk percolating. I'm like, "Yo, do y'all just forget like the whole extension thing?" Like yeah, last. I was, right. I was like, they had the opportunity last. <laughs> we just, last time. We just yeah. kind of did that. Like they last just they season. just re upped them. Like I don't what think are you it's like I don't think it's happening, but I don't think it's happening, fellas. Like, because like, then it's just like, uh, this year I mean, like, should they have? Should they have done it? Like, I if mean, they make that, maybe. if they make that call this off season, then then you know, okay. Oh my god, that'd be that'd be like one of the most at, just at least I'll go, like, but at least like you know, just do it now type of thing instead of like you know another year type. Of, but you know, maybe they they really got you know a lot of faith in the the first years and then maybe the, the class after them, but um. Next, next year has to next year has to be the year like if if nothing happens next year it's never happening like with with duke losing all these guys notre dame losing these guys virginia yeah. losing virginia losing uh schellenberger cormier will fi- probably find a way to still be in college but uh like if it doesn't happen next year like yeah that's too much to get on but yeah virginia won dominant largest fit was great i hope he finds i'll be I hope he continues this year. Like, I don't know what he could do next, but like I hope he just keeps doing it. Uh, Homewood safe? Yeah, Jake. I'll well, see you. I'll see you there. Two weeks. Two weeks. That, that, um, that earthquake that was I'm bringing. That's the energy I'm coming from Jersey on 420. Jake is a great day to be Blue Jay. I loved your tweet uh, for at least a moment. I think it's going to change now. Uh, uh, Hopkins, uh, you know, because they. Yes, it's uh, Hopkins. The new update RPI. We'll talk about it at the. Uh, I just, I don't want to belabor the point with these ESPN broadcasts, but I did love the number one and number two in the RPI. No, that's that's not true. Um, 
And it's still not true after this game. Uh, Notre Dame is number one. Hopkins is number two. I, uh, this is going to be the dream matchup. Hopkins is going to play Notre Dame and Memorial Day Monday, and I'm going to thump to heaven. Um, You're a sick guy. Yeah, I'm going to be in absolute heaven. Um, You're a sick guy. Jays escaped with a 9-8 uh, overtime win over Penn State uh, at Homewood Field on homecoming Day. Jake, I was a little concerned. The Sands didn't look as real as I liked it, but you know, by the second half, the, the, you're the uh, box office, baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Adams ended up 5,500. Love to see it. Love to see it. Um, that's, that's, but, that's uh, the biggest non. I'll look it up. Uh, that's the biggest non Maryland crowd at Hopkins in like years. Oh, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe like a couple of other games in there, but yeah, absolutely. That's it. That's I'll, look, I'll look it up when you talk about. I'll look up when you talk about the game. But yeah, just a great day for uh, the, you know, uh, Hopkins fans. This is definitely going to be another one where you know Penn State's going to kind of look in the mirror and say, "We let this one slip out of our fingers." Uh, especially given the fact that you know you, you kind of called in the DMs, you know, just uh, overtime, uh, you know, you know, with the last forty seconds left, ball in the hands, uh, TJ Malone on a short stick, and it just kind of was like a disaster of that last possession. Uh, Col- Matt Collison, uh, the, the super sophomore, scores the the game winning goal in uh, overtime. Uh, just to, you know, if you're a, a Jays fan, you got to like just like this team in terms of like how they're able to manufacture points, even when, uh, you know, kind of a, a off day offensively, Penn State, you know, seemed to have uh, uh, Jays uh, somewhat in control early on. But, uh, you know, just the ability to fight uh, that we start to sell that uh, patented fourth quarter, uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of like passing maneuver, you know, like. Uh, you mm-hmm. noted last year the Jays were so strong in the fourth. You know they really needed it here uh, going in um, with a uh, you know uh, losing. Uh, yeah, I think it was a seven. Yeah, six four. Uh, Penn State uh, in going into the fourth quarter. T.J. Malone uh, uh, put the uh, lines up by a deuce. But yeah, Garrett Degnan, huge game for Garrett. I mean, like uh, well, Hop was just like kind of not. Getting any type of scoring at all, and then the Aris after uh, you know, three goals in the second half, and uh, I've really just kind of energized him. Mean, you can really see when the Jays, like you know, uh, bench just like explodes when he uh, gets one in there, and he continues his uh, consecutive scoring uh, streak. You know, just uh, uh, the amount of trust that Milton had and also see that you know he had a great look at the end, uh, got past uh, uh, Frayson, but uh, you know just hit the post with like you know a few seconds left, and then uh, you know. Uh, have a nice defensive stand over time, come back uh, to the kid, uh, find him on the inside, and just uh, just a great win. Uh, Hopkins now 3 0, Big Ten play for the first time ever since uh, you know being in the big. Uh, now, wow. uh, you know, at least for the moment, you know, I don't know how the RPI is going to continue shaking out, but now they got wins over Penn State, Maryland, Virginia, you know, it's three top 10 wins. Uh, Georgetown right there at 11. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on, buddy. They didn't oh, beat Maryland sorry. yet. <laughs> Oh my God. Hey. I was on. I was on a heater, Jake. I was on a heater. I was on. Oh, 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 no, you're not, you're not gonna, you might, you're not gonna no, let no, that no, one down. I just, I just, I just jinxed it. Uh, it's like, don't let this guy, uh, don't let him in. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, uh, uh, forgive me, I meant uh, Virginia, Georgetown, and Penn State, uh, you know, three uh, top 11 wins, and you know, they got the Michigan win there as well. A little scared about uh, Ohio State, you know, um, you know when we uh, talk about them uh, in the Maryland game, you know, defensively, and Jay's at Ohio State of uh, happened on House of Horrors, uh, you know, especially during the Petro years. But uh, for at least today, uh, April 7th, a uh, great day to be a Blue Jay fan and alum. Uh, really feeling good. Like I said, of the non-ACC Power 3, like, you know, I, I really do feel Jays have a, you know, a shot at that title. So uh, really uh, liking how they, uh, you know, are playing in the conference play, you know, if they can take care of business uh, against Ohio State is going to really, you know, lead to a nice, tasty uh, end of season matchup with the Terps, end of regular season matchup with the Terps. Uh, all right, I'm just, you know, uh, on the update on our, uh, what I had pointed out, um, a, uh, I have been searching for this uh, for 
Safe, what was the, what was the number? 5834, 5834, uh, yes. Uh, Adam says hop two seed right now, change my mind. They yeah. might be. 5840. Uh, 5840, okay. Um, I'm up to 2017, and going back to 2017, there has not been any bigger non-Maryland. I'm going to say, was that, that, that Loyola that, game? There was a Loyola game in 2017. Yeah. The, the, uh, was I that the... The tinny, the tinny, the tinny game was five thousand two twenty-two. Yeah. So this is even going back then the biggest. I'll keep looking, but I'm gonna, you know, obviously talk about the game. I think, yeah, I think Hopkins. We did the, you know, pod with Mark, and we kind of settled on. I mean, Patrick Stevens at Hop is the five. Uh, we settled on Hopkins being the eight, pro, you know, probably. But we said, look, it could change dramatically if they win, and kind of how it shook out. And I think it has. I think Hop Virginia, if you look at it now, is a much different conversation with Hopkins getting. Um, now it is Maryland is fifth in the RPI right now. Like Maryland was at one point like sixth, and which took a top five win out for Virginia. But Hop had a top five win. Now Virginia does have a top five win as well. Um, Hop though has an additional top ten win. Uh, they would love for George Georgetown to kind of sneak in there as well, you know. But Hop did get Towson uh, into the top twenty, um, which. Uh, is a, a great um, boost for them. Um, they're ahead in the RPI, and they have a, you know, they do have the head-to-head um, some metrics. So it's it is a much different conversation. Um, and with the um, they've also beaten Michigan, so I think it's a much different conversation now. Um, you know, you'd have to kind of really dive into it, but it, it's a much different conversation. I'll tell uh, uh, Adam's point. If it is Hop Towson in the first round, I would be there. Uh, you will you will no see me at home field. <laughs> uh, uh, I hope it's on like a Saturday, a Sunday going down to Baltimore, especially now after everything, you know, probably traffic. I don't that would be a little difficult. But you give me a you give me like a late Saturday, you know, uh, what's that? Five thirty in Homewood. That's, I will be there. That's the game Thursday. you love, Jake. Uh, that's that that is the game I love. I would I would all about that. Uh, so. Um, over say well, I was straining to pick this game on the pick'em, uh, and this is why <laughs> they played overtime last year at Panzer. They played overtime this year. I think if they played in the tournament, they probably would go to overtime. Uh, like I said, it. I think if these teams played a hundred times, they'd be like it washed. It washed out like fifty-one forty-nine. I just think they're so evenly matched. Mm-hmm. Like it's, uh, they're just too just so. The way these teams are, um, uh, you know, um, I think Mark just DM'd us. I think he says he has them at the three right now, but he's kind of working through it. Love to see it, Um, Mark. (laughs) (laughs) Why not us, Mark? (laughs) (laughs) Um, But they're just, they're, yeah, like they're just so. You know, they both have really good offenses. You know, they're both similar in like in terms. Of, you know, they like to move the ball. Um, you know, predominantly. You know, based on you know spacing and ball movement. Both got great defenses, especially Penn State with Jack Posey coming back. I'm really happy about that for them. I thought they're this is the best defense they've played all year uh, with Posey back there. Um, really good goalies. This was this goalie matchup, man. Goodness, I mean, Frassian was fantastic. He made. Goodness, 18, 17 saves. But Chase Ireland was terrific as well. I thought this was probably the best game he's played for Hopkins. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think maybe he's, played, he's had some other good ones. Uh, but in the difference, I think, in the end, is probably like uh, Penn State felt like they ran a bit more out of gas towards the end. Um, probably the clearing for Penn State is a problem. they got to get cleared up. It was an issue against Maryland. They kind of blew a couple clears there. They had some issues kind of transition that sub game. The middle of the field is a bit of an issue, I think, for Penn State. Um, and for Hopkins, like, we talk about Penn State. Like, what is what is their thing? It's get the short stick matchups on, for Malone especially, but also maybe Matt Trainer or Costin. Um, or, um, you know, and, um, or, uh, you know, Morin is, uh, you know, um, as uh well like and um like uh but mainly costin you know is the is the is the, is the big the big one um 
like 7, 22, 23. They get those guys on shorties. And, but if they can't, it really, like you saw in the second half against Maryland, it really is like they got to, they're forced into dodging. Like Malone's got to dodge a long pole, not his strength. Then they forced like Will Pete in to dodge a long pole or, you know, Ethan Long to dodge a long pole. Mm, uh, or like a short, even those guys that dodge like a, sh- even those guys that dodge a shorty, and those guys don't have that in them. Um, whereas Hopkins, while they did not play their best offensive game, um, and Penn State with Posey back there able to, you know, do a great job of Melendez. Posey really took Melendez out of the ball game, um, and then Alex Ross did a, a strong job on Angeles. Hopkins has a bit more juice in their Dodgers. Um, you know, they got some different guys like Dylan Bauer, you know, with his speed um, and guys who can make a little bit more happen. And for like you kind of saw, like in that I now the, the game went and go. I did think I don't think Penn State needed to slide. Like, I, I think they just, you know, they kind of created offense a bit there and just opened it up for Collison. But Hopkins had just had a bit more where they can make they can squeeze a bit more out of it um, than Penn State can in the one on one matchups. And that kind of just is the difference in the end. Um uh, and in addition, like Penn State, just yeah, kind of beaten themselves. I, I, I think it's also a case of for Penn State. Um, we how many times have we seen them pull off these comebacks, um, and like they shooting, they, they, they go on these shooting, you know, these long shooting streaks. You know, they you know they hit almost every shot. It feels like, um, but you know, there is a case of that, like you know, there's only so many comebacks you can pull off, you know? We saw it against Yale in this year. We saw it against Princeton in the first round of the tournament last year. There were other games. Look, man, it's like you can't do that forever. And now I think we might be seeing, like, do I think this Penn State team is a, is a very good team? Absolutely. Uh, do I think they're a Final Four contender still? Yes, especially getting Posey back on defense. That is big. I do think that takes your defense on a level. Like, I do think there's a feeling like they might be more of, like, a quarterfinal type team. Whereas, like, look, they honestly probably should have played on Memorial Day last year. Um, and, like, though they propelled them maybe a notch above where they could have, they should maybe, you know. And it's like, now it feels like maybe it's kind of going back the other way on them, you know, blowing the lead to Maryland, giving up a six goal run. Now this with Hopkins giving up a four goal run in the fourth quarter. It's like, these things just kind of net out in the end, you know. It's like they rode the wave for a little bit there with these, and now it's kind of catching up with them. Um, I still, again, I still think they're a very good team, but, you know, it's sometimes it can, you know, kind of that kind of luck and regression can catch up with you. Um, but yeah, like there's, uh, and it might be, you know, kind of them sort of falling back more to their, you know, kind of level in that seven, eight range than kind of three to four. Um, but it'll be, it'll be interesting to see where they can kind of them the next couple of weeks, um, getting that defense back more healthy. I think Kevin Parnum came back as well, but he didn't start, um, and see where they can kind of settle in. Um, Michigan next week. That'll be a Mich- Michigan beat them in the Big Ten tournament, and Michigan should have beat them in the regular yeah. season. Uh, so that'll be a big game. I think Penn State, they're going to make the tournament, provided they don't mess up and like lose to Rutgers. Uh, but to really kind of seal for like a home game, they'll want that Michigan win. Um, and they'll just kind of, you know, want to get momentum back on track. You know, they've lost these last two games. Um, you want to, you know, build up again, like, you know, kind of clear up these clearing issues they've had. And get that defense, you know, again, kind of more, you know, cohesive and locked in with Posey back there. So, whereas Hopkins, uh, Ohio State, I guess maybe transition to Maryland, Ohio State. Uh, you know, look, man, Ohio State's got kind of similar to Penn, maybe, like we talked about. I and mean, we talked Penn Yellow as well. Like, this game was everything. <laughs> it was everything I said it was going to be. Like, it just to act like, pure mud fight i mean just honestly it might have been worse <laughs> than i thought it was gonna be like i thought it was gonna be like one of like we said it was trench warfare i thought it might have been like the like german trenches mm. where like they had like running water and electricity Is you know at least. yeah <laughs> yeah like no this was like the british and french trench like you know it's like there's like there's like mud and feces like building up in there you know this like you look to your right like wrecking havoc <laughs> like, it's just disease. <laughs> you look you look to your right and there's just like, oh, there's a it's just dead yeah. off to your right. You know, you're just you're just writing soldier you're just writing letters back home like I haven't died yet, but that's only because it's not my time. You just smell dead horse meat <laughs> just everywhere. Just... 
It was, it was, just, it was, it was rough. I mean, yeah, that's Ohio State's, you know, again, I mean, they're not a great team this year, but they have, they have their identity and they play to it. But they play, they, they make it a, a total grind. Uh, the first, a hard, the first, the first half and six, Jake, a hard <laughs> They continue. They've lost six games, all of them the top ten teams. <laughs> they have they have the best time I've ever had lots like I've ever heard. I've seen. It's incredible. I'm uh, like multiple opponents because some you know some of the ACC years where they really lose to one of team. But um, yeah, sorry. Um, it, it, it's it's so uh, you know. Three three at halftime. Just these long, it, like these, these. It's like this throwback to, uh, you know, these like the old you know pre shock like the dinosaur age. Uh, <laughs> just these long, uh, you know. 60, 70, you know, second possessions. Uh, I mean, Maryland's offense at the time, like, I mean, I don't even want to talk about it. Uh, Ohio State's offense is just, like, exclusively, like, dodging to the middle of the field to take, like, 15-yard shots. <laughs> like, that's just it. <laughs> like, like, their last, like, they scored three goals after they were down 6-3 to tie it up at 6-6. Uh and then, like, they got it to 8-7. And their last possession is just, like, an 18-yard shot to the middle of the field. <laughs> it's like, okay. Uh, Not even a pick. Just, just straight just, dodge. Just straight dodge <laughs> shot. <laughs> it's like, all right. I mean, like, on the one hand, it worked to agree. But it's also, like, because if they do get to the middle, like, they like they have some good shooters. And, like, they have done like, 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 the guys they recruit is just, like, it's like, it's just pure. It's like it's good. It's like straight like 2010 lacrosse. Yeah. Like just six three two hundred. Just dur- just drive and shoot. <laughs> it's, just, it's absolutely. Like, just, we have to go back. <laughs> it's, like, it's everything Ohio State does right now. It's amazing. Uh, Maryland again. Like I, again, anybody's listening to this, you know I've been dreading this game for you know uh, weeks and weeks. They got the dub. Like I'm not gonna you know. I'm not gonna complain about it. Uh, you know, it was what it was. It's a win. Um, you know, chalk it up, move on. Uh, what it now? Two and one in Big Ten play. They can get. They got Rutgers at home next week. That's got to be a W. And if you get that, you can go to Homewood, chance to win the league. Which, listen, man, in a you know, with where Mar- you know, for bottom, you know, three or four Tillman Maryland seed. To still have a chance to win the league is, you know, it's <laughs> pretty, pretty good. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna, every, everything with Maryland right now is like just arguing like first world problems. No one wants to hear it. Yeah. Like it's like, man, it's you know, like tough season. It's like, oh, you're you know, you get a first round home game and you might win the Big Ten. Like, just like get out of here, loser. <laughs> I think some guys only winning sixty <laughs> percent. <laughs> They're only gonna be the sixth seed. Like, God forbid. <laughs> you know. Uh, our, no, our like, all-American goalie's a little shaky with the clearing. <laughs> <laughs> that like they they don't have a tour to, like for the first time in in <laughs> ten years they don't have a tour to, on winner on the attack. It's, Literally, this is the first time in eleven in it's, last. It's two not years. the integrity of the program. Just <laughs> <laughs> standards, <laughs> standards got to be met. Same, uh, but no, like. I keep saying it, like, just don't beat themselves. They still almost did it. Like, they blew a clear, like, at, you know, uh, after they won the faceoff, you know. But, like, the clearings got a lot better the last two weeks. Weirman won faceoffs. McNaney was great. Logan was great uh, in the net. Granted, like, both him and Fioc, like, they made a bunch of saves. But, like, for the first, like, three quarters, like, I like 90% of them were just, like, right into their stick. <laughs> it was just... Um, you know, it was what I said. Like, as long as they don't beat themselves, they're going to be in a position where pretty much, like, this formula works. It's, it's what we talk. It's get back to where they were at the beginning of the year. You know, it's like Logan and that the defense, Luke at the faceoffs, don't beat yourself. That's going to get this team past 
a first round home game and it'll give them a chance in a quarterfinal. Like, is it going to be enough to get to a final four? I don't know, but it'll give them a shot. And that's what you got to do is like, do I think they can beat Notre Dame or Virginia? I don't know. Do I think they will beat Hopkins? Like, I don't know, but like, I want to see it when they don't beat themselves. Like, and you know, that's, that's the key. It's like, give actually not beating themselves and give yourself a shot. Like, I think, you know, I thought Virginia played pretty darn close to their eight, you know, very good against Maryland. Maybe they don't in a rematch. Well, you got to give yourself a chance if they don't. Yeah. You know, I thought Notre Dame, I thought I didn't think Notre Dame played their best against Maryland in that game. I, and I thought Maryland had a shot if they had played, like, anywhere, like, what, not their, like, D minus game. Like, so, um, yeah. Eric Spanos is playing. Like, he's he's starting to get, like, like when Maryland needed goals in this game, he just started, like, give me the ball, I'm going to go get it. And that's what people have been talking about, Maryland. Like, they need. They need somebody just, like, just um, – yes, I love Adam. But I'm saying, Ohio State establishes the run. <laughs> it's like Iowa. It's Iowa football. It's like <laughs> it's like watching Iowa football. <laughs> like, we're just going to, you know, you know, we're going to run for, like, you know, like 160 yards on, like, 40 carries. <laughs> like, three, 3. 3.8 yards per attempt. Oh, <laughs> just, pure, just, just, you know uh, – this is absolutely grotesque. Yeah. But listen, it's a it's an identity at least. Like you know, last year their defense was just uh, like it shows. Like the offense they were good. Like I don't think it, I don't think they can win this way. Like I don't think you can pull off three wins like this. It might get them an upset over somebody, which you know for how Hopkins is next. Like you know, it's like you don't want to be the team that gets bit by it. Um. So, uh. But Maryland got to escape with it. Yeah, Spanos, Spanos has come along. When Maryland needed to go, he went out and got it. And that's what people have been looking for, so hopefully it's positive sign. They got the dub. Move on. Uh, forget about Forget it ever happened. Oh, yeah. <sighs> got 20 minutes left, Safe. Where are we going next? want to go to uh, scores in general or any other team? Uh, okay. we, got, we got Penn, Penn Yale. I was going to say, yeah, the, the Bulldogs really had a chance to, like, put the Ivy League in a uh, chokehold and, you know, uh, ends up uh, Yale. The Quakers, uh, the Quakers, the Quakers did. Yeah, it's like, yeah, Yale winning a 12-9. But I meant, like, if Penn had won, they would have had the Ivy in a chokehold with a, you know, four. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. You said the, you said the Bulldogs had the chance. Oh, I mean, Penn, Penn would have had a chance. I, uh, but, yeah, definitely. Uh, Penn had a chance. The Quakers had a chance of uh, putting the Ivy League in a uh, uh, chokehold and just – yeah, we weren't able to uh, pull it off. Uh, I know uh, that or just was uh, on this uh, national scale. Let's talk about them real quick. Who's in the Colgate before uh, the? Oh, uh, yeah, Army. I mean, that's. I mean, obviously, like it, the, the, the at large hopes are cooked. I mean, that's you know kind of the big takeaway there. I mean, Army's had this kind of. It's happened like where they've had these like really tough Aprils, like strong, and then midway through the season they seem to kind of hit that wall, and it feels, feels like it's happening now. The question is, can they get it back on you know back on track here in these last couple of weeks? The schedule is going to be a tough one. They still got to play Navy. Uh, I think Army Navy is is next week, isn't it? Yeah. So I mean, and Navy is a team playing with you know. Uh, I mean, they're getting some results. It's not always necessarily, you know, pretty. Uh, like, they had a, they two one-goal wins last couple weeks against Colgate and Lafayette. But uh, Navy's won five of their last seven games. They've beaten BU. They've beaten Hopkins. Um, of course, in between, they're lost by, like, seven to Villanova. So, like, you know, it's 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 not like it's exactly ever, you know, clear with Navy what you're going to get. But um, they're in a, you know, that's going to be a tough one for Army. Um, and they got... They're at Bucknell, which is a uh, Bucknell was uh, had a big lead over Loyola at one point, uh, and then like blew it away. Uh, they should take care of that one. Then they're at Loyola to end the year. Um, a Loyola team that has won three in a row. Uh, so, I mean, look, the Army team we saw through the first month, you'd think would win all these games. Um, that's, that's the thing that to. It, the season's not over yet. They can still make the tournament, but like, if they don't, the chances, you know, with the, like having gone undefeated in non-conference play, just uh, yeah, everything just being on the table. Maybe two ACC teams. That's what I'm saying. Like, 
that you they're going um you get lots of play they always could uh you know fight their way in with the uh, patriot league uh automatic qualifier you're absolutely right they play like they did the first six seven weeks of the season like you know they should be able to walk away with it but yeah to to, to kind of waste a uh, just a great non-conference year and uh with uh you know patriot league defeats that you know on paper they kind of were you know somewhat heavy favorites in both of those games uh especially the colgate game i don't think uh you know maybe i didn't see the line but probably like six or seven i thought it probably would have been uh it for, for DraftKings. but yeah and uh yeah the bu game i think they were like plus eight on that one again you know that's that's trying to entice people to bet so not i don't know if everyone expected them to win by eight but um yeah, it could uh, be uh, turned around. And anyway, you beat Navy and you make the tournament. Uh, you have that type of ACC year. You'll definitely look back at this as a little bit of a lull. But uh, hey, they got it on track and made it um, uh, happen when they needed to. But yeah, that's the only reason. Just wanted to jump in there. Just like just you know the changes in fortune that can happen in like a week or two and cause a cross landscape. It's just kind of yeah, startling. But yeah, uh, uh, forgive me. Uh, uh, just getting back to heads. no. I, I think I, I think it's one of like I think they can bounce back from this. Like I think if you know you just kind of get a big like Navy uh, being Navy will be huge. Like just reset, get a rivalry win. You know, uh, get that. You know, hopefully you can kind of you know get that. The goalie thing seems to be like just they don't have kind of that vintage army goalie. You know, like Sean Burns been better, but still fifty percent. Um, but maybe try and get the defense. You know, sort of kind of figured out a bit. Um, my kind of concern would be trying to win three games in that Patriot League tournament. Because right now where they're at is in the Patriot League, there's three one-loss teams, BU, Colgate, Navy. Army has lost the head-to-head to two of those teams. Yeah. Like, if they lose to Navy, they are guaranteed they are going to have to win three games to win the Patriot League tournament. If they beat Navy... And they went out. They'll finish six and two. They're probably not. They're not going to win. I don't think. Like the way, like, I mean, it might turn into a case where it's just like a crazy tiebreaker situation. Because um, BU is home to Lafayette, which you figure they'll win. That they're at Lehigh and they're at Colgate. Like maybe it turns into like a like. But even if it's like a three way tie with BU, Colgate, and Army, I mean, Army lost to those other two teams, so like that's them out of it. Uh, Colgate's home to Lehigh at Holy Cross and BU, like. There's a chance they finish third here in this, you know, and they like winning three games in a week to win the conference. Man, that's that's tough. And do I think they could maybe pull it off? I think it's possible. Like they have the advantage with Coletti at faceoff, where like, you know, you kind of can get on that, just kind of ride that kind of wave with the advantage. You know, of having the faceoff guy can protect the defense. Um, they're still the most talented team clearly in the conference. Um, but that is tough, and it certainly would obviously, even if you got, it would certainly leave you very taxed for like the next week in the first round of the tournament. Yeah. Um, which, and that's, I think that is the thing is like with them is tough. Is like this felt like it'd be a different year. Like they came in with legitimate kind of final four expectations, and I don't think that was necessarily wrong. They made, they almost made it last year. Um, it would feel, it really felt like at least you know home game in the tournament was like on the table for them this year, like in the in that first round. Um, and that's not you know going to happen. So. But at this point, yeah, it's like they got to at this point to get in. And I, I do think I think if they get a, a first round buy and again, that fun, I think I'd make them the favorite, uh, though it is worth pointing out like BU has really had their number the last couple of years in that series. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so like you kind of got to really take that into consideration. But um, you don't want the have... of uh, being number one at the rank to the some fine season and not making the tournament. Yeah. That would be that'd be so that'd be so tough. Uh, but yeah, having to win three games and but they play those Patriot League quarterfinals Tuesday, that'd be what th- uh, three games in six days to make the tournament? Man, that's rough. That's tough. And isn't home team or is it a uh, uh, first round uh, home team? Uh, no, sorry, is it on the uh, is it neutral side of the Patriot League? I forget now on the top of my head. No, the Patriot League is uh, first round. Whoever's the number mm-hmm. one seed hosts, which again, like I don't, they're not going to host. No, I just meant like uh, so technically, like, like a away games. Just meant like you know for for those. Like, well, they'd host they'd host that quarterfinal, like they in that for like so that that'd be a home game. But then after that, it'd be you know at the site of whoever's you know. Hopefully, hopefully which is not there five six seed. That, that, that's just over. Oh my god! Well, yeah, I mean that. But at that point, I mean we're talking like you know 
like the season's gone into a tailspin. Yeah. Like you know, <laughs> things have gone way off the rails. Of course, yeah. Um, I wanted to touch on that just like I said, just uh, kind of precarious situation for the uh, Black Knights. Uh, Jake, I kind of feel that the uh, in tongue in cheek way, but the, the Yale uh, SID was uh, the, the shots fired with uh, defense powers uh, Bulldogs to win over. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, uh, just a sound uh, defensive effort for Yale, who uh, rightfully so. That we called out for like not having uh, that great of a defense, but yeah, uh, beating uh, Penn 12 9. Um, Jake, uh, you know, kind of uh, like I said at the time, uh, you know, uh, Penn had a chance to, uh, you know, kind of put the Ivy League in a you know, really secure four uh, uh, mm -hmm. with a four uh, uh, four zero conference record. Uh, now, you know, both teams are now at three at one. Um, you know, obviously, Yale has a tiebreaker, but uh, uh, you know, Paquette, 12, uh, 10 saves, forgive me. Um, the Brandau uh, leads uh, team scoring with five total points, three goals, two assists. Uh, you know, just kind of um, being a bit low low key in terms of offensive explosion for uh, the Bulldogs, but uh, you got to be happy to, you know, have a, um, you know, uh, a game against a conference opponent uh, who, you know, pretty uh, – Penn can score when needed, you know, depending on – Opponent, they, they can put some points up, but uh, you know, to hold them to uh, single digits has uh, probably been something that uh, you know, Coach Day is pretty uh, happy about after this weekend. Um, may have uh, what do you think knocked Penn's chances for uh, at large uh, kind of kind of out the window, or uh, maybe that you, you can get over that on bracketology, but it's, it's a good win for uh, Yale, it's an important win for Yale in terms of like Ivy League purposes, and like I said, uh, you know, with that bubble. Uh, at large uh, table, you just want to if you have to bump bump your conference mates uh, out of the way so that uh, put yourself in a better position. So I think Yale, uh, yeah, I think uh, in our poll maybe a top eight, top seven, uh, you know, once uh, we get out there. And I just like I said, just think uh, Yale did really did themselves a, a lot of good service uh, by by beating the Quakers this weekend. But it's interesting, like. I I think this feels, in the end, like a missed opportunity for Penn. Um, this was a Penn game. Like, you look at the possessions in this game, 31 possessions for Penn, 36 for Yale, 67 possessions. This was way less possessions than in the Penn, like, uh, Cornell game last week, though kind of close and similar. Fewer possessions than... Uh, in kind of, You've seen a lot of these other Ivy League games. Like, this is what Penn wanted. The pace in the game was what, uh, you know, average possession, like Yale's average possession was 55 seconds. Yale's time to first shot normally is 31 seconds. So normally Yale is taking a possession, pardon me, Yale is taking their first shot 30 after about 50 seconds, kind of the shot clock. Now consider like how quickly, consider like clearing, you know, let's say it takes them 10, 15 seconds to clear. Basically, like, t after 10 seconds after they've cleared, Yale's going to the goal. Mm -hmm. They're taking a shot. You can... It was 47 seconds time to the first shot here. Like, you know, you can basically double it. Like, you know, the normal time. Like, Penn really slowed this game down. And Yale won anyway. Uh, and, like, face-offs in this game were... Somewhat even. Pretty close. Yeah. They think yeah, I pulled like, on the ground balls. Absolutely. That's, yeah, yeah like... Ended. Ground balls, Penn failed six clears. Uh, can't do that. Like, just unforced errors by Penn. Um, not, you know, uh, Yale took 17 more shots in this game. And in the end, the goalie matchup, uh, Carroll made some saves late. Um you know, like, he was really strong in the second half. But through the first half, you know, like, in, in the fourth quarter, like, uh, Penn scored, like, two of their five shots. But, like, Paquette was really strong for Yale. It was his best game of the year. Um, it, I do think it's it, this was a positive sign for Yale that they could win a game like this. Um, you know, it didn't have to be a track meet. Because uh, that's what it's felt like for Yale for the last, I don't know, three years. Like, if Yale's going to beat you, it's got to be a track meet. 
Yale can't really win a 12-9 type of game. I think that was big. And I, I do think – now, for the, it to happen, I do think, like, they need Paquette to really, like, stand back strong back there. Um, they like, they need to find – like, they've got guys who can take the ball away on defense. Like, Pisano, Stews, and, like, those guys. They're great takeaway guys. They need to find a way to turn that into, like, less goals. Like, it's got to be a way where, like, you know – because they still give up goals. It's got to be something they can, like, weaponize into being a real... St- like, it's not just, like, empty stats, basically. Like, it can, I think it that was a... You know, it, that manifested itself there. Um, yeah, I think that's a positive sign. It's something Yale's... Like, Yale's got to find a way to take this blueprint of what they did on Saturday and keep it going. Because uh, this Yale team you saw on Saturday is a... Is a, is a it's definitely a top-10 team. It's a team that, you know, can, I think, make some noise more down the stretch of the year, you know. Um... For Penn, though, yeah, it feels like a missed opportunity. If you said the game was 12-9, who do you think would have won? 100%. Yeah. Yeah, like that, said, they took the ball, uh, took, took the air out of the ball, uh, got uh, Yale, just, uh, you know, uncomfortable situations. Uh, yeah, I would 12-9, gave me that score. That would have been, yeah, it's a quick victory. Just exactly. giving, like, Penn or with uh, uh, Yale's offense, would be like, oh, you know, if they can't score, you know, they, they, they get in a little bit of trouble, but. Here they yeah. still score double digits. Is, it's all right, probably a little bit below their, uh, you know, what they were expecting. But uh, yeah. And the, the other factor, I mean, you know, I said it like, I, I don't care about Toraton stuff. Like, you know, it, it's whatever. Um, Yale really leaned on Brandau. Uh, I think he broke the, uh, I think he might have broke the points record um, for Yale. I know he was close in the second half. Um, he like he took a lot of shots, twelve. So it wasn't the most efficient. But like going up against Brendan Lavelle, three goals, two assists. He was fantastic. Like I mean, he's really he's having a big time season. Like that was the kind of game where it was like he's got to go out there and be the big dog for them, and he was. Um, and that, you know, that was a factor. So it puts the Ivy League. I mean, I think Quinn was kind of laughing about it on the broadcast uh, after once again. Uh, you know, again, not to you know, believe the points by the broadcast, but someone mentioned that Penn was three and zero going into Ivy League play today. They were not. Uh, Yale's a three and one. Cornell's a three and one. Penn is a three and one. Princeton's a two and one. So, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, just, I mean, kind of, uh, you know, feels like we're going right back to where we were last year. Uh, you know, with a crazy kind of end to I have a feel. Yale plays Dartmouth uh, next week. And then doesn't play, uh, has a week off before they get Princeton to kind of to close. Like Princeton's not out of, like Princeton is like kind of, we feel like so far removed from the tournament kind of picture. And I think they are in terms of like, like Princeton, it feels like it's like, you got to just win out. Yeah. But like, but like they're not out of winning the, the Ivy League. <laughs> That's what I think they may, they may actually do it. They run back with like they could beat Penn and Yale. Like the Princeton got Brown next week, then they play Penn at home and they're at Yale. Like they're still. In this thing in the Ivy, they they kind of been quiet the last couple of weeks because like Princeton's racked up three wins in a row. Princeton they really need to win that Lehigh game, um, and like if you think about it, like Princeton should have won that Cornell game. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my god! Yes. <laughs> about that. Oh, uh, Cornell's got Cornell has a week a week off break from conference play because they play in their name, and then they Cornell's got the easiest sort of path it feels like to get to five and one because they got Harvard and Dartmouth. So it feels like you give Cornell kind of the inside track. But who knows? Um, it does feel like it's going to be these four. You know, uh, Harvard's got to pull an upset or two. Um, with Harvard's got to go at two Penn, two Cornell, and then finish with Brown. So, uh, but yeah, uh, how's it going to close out here? I have no idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> who could say? It's the Ivy League Wheel of Destiny. Yeah, yeah it's got a sneak. I mean, they, they absolutely torched BU last year, but. Uh... They did got that sneaky. They used, they're playing them Tuesday this week. So I, I wonder. Uh, he has got a lot. He has got a lot of midweek games coming up. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think Princeton. I I'm maybe just uh, uh, too much uh, invested in Tigers, but uh, yeah, I feel like if it came down to like the Ivy League tournament, like I I, I still think I still think of the Princeton Tigers may come out with it. I'm in a in- tournament, I I like that offense in a tournament kind of situation. Yale's faceoff group feels tough to beat, winning a lot of those faceoffs. Um, 
John for if John for Carl can get locked in for Princeton, I might lean the way. Like if he can, Princeton's offense and if John for Carl can just steal two games, yeah, like that feels like it could be something. Princeton's young, that like Princeton is young, like that's stuff, like which can go either way. Like it get hot, or it also could be like they could lose the first game and like in you know fashion. I mean, if I was you know I, the honest answer is I really don't know. <laughs> like I, I, last year, Princeton was coming in with some momentum like they like to come momentum. they were kind of like they were the most desperate they had to win it this year i genuinely have no it i, I can't wait for, i can't wait to watch it i think it's going to be a fantastic tournament but yeah and it's going to be at a home site that's, this year which is always that's great. probably the other reason why i'm hoping because i want to go up to just like get two two for one two games for one <laughs> not entirely <laughs> You can go live. You can go live. Yeah. Sorry, exactly. Not- I was like, it's not entirely <laughs> self-serving, but this one, yeah, this was like 90% self-serving. That's I just, I just want to go like 20 minutes to to see these games. But, uh, oh, God. Yeah. We're done the rest of the game? The Ivy. <laughs> uh, what else we got? We had uh, in the MAC, Manhattan beat VMI 9-8. Uh, a close one there gets Manhattan to five and one. And shout out to Manhattan, man. They change coaches every year, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> they just, they just, they just another thing that all they do is win, Jake. The St. Joe's Hawks started out 0 3, won again uh, this past weekend against uh, you know, uh, Nation, uh, you know the nation's longest win streak. They, I'm gonna say it's them, Georgetown, maybe Georgetown. Like, uh, uh yeah, I think Georgetown might be Georgetown. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, we'll get the, yeah, we'll get there. Uh, uh, Binghamton yeah. beats Vermont. Uh, uh, but yeah, seven in a row now for. Uh, uh, yeah, Binghamton beats Vermont eleven ten in overtime. Uh, win for the uh, the Bearcats. There they won three in a row in America East play, and there's a four way tie at three and one in the America East between Bryant, Binghamton, UMBC, and uh, Albany. Uh, Pretty crazy. Cornell beats Brown 14 to 8. Uh Cleveland State blows up Mercer 69. Speaking of Georgetown, they were locked in a tight one with Marquette. Uh yeah. at one point. This was a one point, it was a one point game uh in the fourth going to the fourth quarter. Yes, the Hoyos won eight in a row. Uh so uh Hoyos are out to two and oh uh in Big East play. And that sets us up for the again, we can talk about maybe the most consequential game of the season uh next week. Out to Denver, George uh Pios and Hoyos. Uh, big, big one next week. Monmouth beats Hampton 15-4. to four. Uh, Hobart, I'm sorry to say, is officially on bad situation. We got two Browns on bad situation watch. Hobart is on bad situation That's watch. Uh, yeah. Richmond was up 14-2 at halftime. Richmond just blows teams yeah. out. Man. Like, it's just, it's like, it's just, Richmond's average margin of victory is, like, insane. Like, it's, uh, like, 80, they're plus 88 in their seven victories. Uh, Richmond St. Joe's for the A10 this year could be something per, like pretty neat. Uh, Towson, 15 to 11. It was, it was fun. All you've been saying is Tigers are back. Where are the Tigers? Uh, yeah. Towson, Delaware, 4 0. They feel like they're on a collision course in the CAA. It'll be pretty much they'll probably play twice in a week because that's the last game in the regular season. It'll be whoever wins that gets the. Uh, gets to host the tournament and they'll play there probably again. Um, Jacksonville 19 5 over Queens. We spoke about Navy beat Lafayette 10 to 9. Uh, big upset in Big East oh, play. Shit. Providence. <laughs> Bobby Benson. <laughs> 15 to 12 over Villanova. Villanova is 0 and 2 in Big East play now, uh, which is not great. Uh, but a big win for Bobby Benson Providence. Maybe his best big. Best win yet there. You know, uh, I was just going to yeah, give uh, some, you know, I love Bobby, so I'm good. it's not weird for me to, uh, like, or out of nowhere to give him praise. But, yeah, like, the last week, I mean, the Duke game, it is what it is, but the St. Joe's game. Should have beat St. Joe's. They should have won that game. They, they had that won. game. They had that. Georgetown, like, uh, definitely probably covered, uh, you know, lost to them at uh, 15 to 10. Now beat Villanova. I mean, Maybe. you get a uh, win on St. John's. Uh, you, you probably making the Big East tournament for sure. And, uh yeah, yeah, definitely a great day for uh, gotta get the uh, Mar- fire. Gotta stay. get the Marquette game next week. That'll be the key. Definitely, yeah. yeah. But um, get the free- as long as he, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I guess Villanova could finish, uh, you know, rally and uh, uh, have less than two, uh, uh, more than two wins, but uh, in Big East play. But uh, yeah, good shout out to them. I think a uh, you know, big win for the Fires. It's just Villanova, just uh, you know, yeah. 
really, I think that kind of messes up a few teams that had Villanova as a top 20 win. Um, yeah, that uh, kind of loses that uh, allure. Knox Villanova to 23rd in RPI. They are no longer the tipping point team. Uh, Siena 13 10 over uh, Quinnipiac. That's a, no, that's a bad loss for Yale. Sorry to, to, to interrupt there. And a bad loss for Penn State. That's too. Well, I guess uh, Colgate's no longer there. No, so loss yeah. For Penn State. No, uh, Villanova's. So they, they, sorry, they they beat uh, Yale. Beat yeah, I'm looking at uh, Villanova's record. I saw the yeah, but uh, yeah. Uh, oh, the, the tipping uh, point. The tipping point. Colgate has like Penn State like living and dying with Colgate is like the funniest thing. It, it like changes like every like with every result. It's like every like update like Colgate like bounces like in and out. It's the funniest. The Raiders. Like, that's it. That's what Penn State is. When, when they win, they're like the Raiders, and then they lose, they're like the Raiders. <laughs> like Penn State is like willing Colgate to like get to like you know over the line. It's so funny. Like literally, like last night they were in, after they beat Army, they were in. Then Albany lost, and they jumped back out. And now they now today mm. they're back in. <laughs> I'll have to, I'll have to run the Michigan Rutgers game and see if it changes. <laughs> it's, it's so funny. Oh my god. Uh, Sienna 13, couldn't be back 10. My God, Sacred Heart. <laughs> just, break, just break up the right. Pioneers, Jake. Break them up. 13-goal win, 13 win over Wagner, 11-goal win over LIU, 5-goal win over Maris, 10-goal win over VMI. Uh, Sacred Heart is going to win the uh, MWC regular season, uh, looks like, uh, though they still got three games left because the MWC just never stops playing lacrosse. <laughs> uh, UMBC smacks UMass Lowell 21-5. Uh, and we talk about there's a, f- a four way tie at the top of the America East. Um, what else we got here? Air Force 11, Bellarmine 7. The Falcons are on top of the A Sun, safe at 5 and 0. Oh. Uh, they are looking strong there. Jacksonville and Utah are in sec- uh, tied for second place at 4 and 1. Uh, as we spoke about, Loyola was down like 11 to 6 against Bucknell or something. It was looking kind of scary uh, there, but the Greyhounds pull it out uh, 15 to 13. Uh, the Patriot League's a mess. I don't, I don't really know what to, you know, um, kind of say about it. Uh, there's like three, three-way tie at four and one, and then a three-way tie at three and two. So it looks like your six teams are kind of sad: BU, Colgate, Navy, Army, Lehigh, Loyola. The order? Who could say? Um, Delaware 14, Fairfield 6, Lehigh 9, Holy Cross 7, Merrimack 15, 14 win over NGIT, tough one for uh, the Highlanders who have lost a couple close ones in uh, America East play. As we mentioned, St. Joe's 12, UMass 7, 7 in a row for St. Joe's. Uh, them and Richmond look like they're on a collision course in uh, A10 play. Man, I kind of mentioned this. This felt like St. Joe's is 14th in our. This is, like, if they could have been. If the they could have like a if, ridden. if they could have. I, like it, they lost like the BU and Taos, like the BU and Taos lost. They weren't close, so it's not like a thing like worth like looking back on because like they got blown out. But if they had won those games, this like might be a thing worth talking. About. <laughs> like it's like the it, like the A tenth, like you know, like the way their RPI shook out, like like legit, like if they they might be like in the top ten if they won those two games. <laughs> <laughs> like, which is this thing we always talk about with A10. Like, what if like one team like goes like lose one game in non-con and like then like you know like maybe I don't know, but you know again they lost like they were not a great team early, but they've really come along since. Detroit Mercy twelve, Linda one eight, uh, Harvard or Dartmouth we said Stony Brook beats Drexel thirteen to eight, uh, good win for the Sea Wolves, which gets them. Uh, into a three-way tie at two and two in the CAA, Monmouth, Fairfield, and Stony Brook. Uh, those are the teams fighting for the final two uh, tournament spots in the CAA. Marist wins a one-goal game, eleven to ten over the Mount. Um, so uh, that gets Marist to uh, two and four in um, MWC, but MWC looks like it's going to be Sacred Heart, Manhattan, LAU, and Quinnipiac. Uh, and then last night, Bryant beat Albany 13-12 to in a tight one uh, in America East play. And then one more game tonight, safe. Sunday night, BTN is back. Michigan versus Rutgers. Uh, we've been saying it. Michigan, uh, they're certainly not out of the tournament picture. Uh, they're 13th in RPI. They got a top five win. Uh, but that's all they got. So, like, if they want to have hopes, it means they got to keep winning. Uh, they certainly can cannot afford by any means to take a bad loss. They got to just keep on winning uh, from basically here on out for Michigan. If uh, any at-large hope pretty much relies on probably winning to the Big Ten Championship or at least 
to maybe to a yeah i would say that to a big 10 championship something like that um which at that point you probably just might as well win the aq uh but basically for michigan it's just it's keep winning uh the win for michigan would get them to two and one and a tie for second in big 10 play Rutgers is looking to avoid going 0-3 in Big Ten play for the first time ever. Uh, I think maybe 2015 they might have. Um, the uh, Scarlet Knights haven't really been competitive in their first two Big Ten games. Lost by five and lost by six. Um, they're at Michigan. Uh, you know, but we'll see. Sunday night BTN always seems to kind of produce the fireworks. Uh, some drama, so hopefully we get a good one in Ann Arbor. Uh, but that is your next game up. All right, Jake. It's a great weekend. Looking forward to another good week of games. Uh, I don't know, man. It's just going to keep changing. I mean, I, I, I don't know if Lax, uh, Zach at Lax Reference has updated everything. but uh, Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, right now, top 10 RPI, Notre Dame, Hopkins, Duke, Virginia, Maryland 5, Denver 6, Syracuse 7, Yale 8, Penn State 9, Cornell 10. Uh, and then I guess your kind of tipping point situation right now, which is always pivotal. Towson is 19, Colgate is 20, and BU is 21. Definitely. Something to keep your eye on. Um, probably things will change a little bit with Michigan Rutgers, but uh, not too significantly. But yeah, we're definitely going to see some uh, surprises probably coming in the store in the next uh, week or two. And then um, obviously, uh, you know, on the 20th, two weeks from now, uh, be, or, yeah, 13 days from now, I'll be down there to see we hanging out with you. Before dusk, baby. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Twilight. <laughs> That's Twilight. Ball. Twilight. Before this, what was, what's that? What's that? Uh, Ethan Hawk before sunset. <laughs> <laughs> you got to find a picture of Milliman and uh, Delman looking at each other and just used to before sunset. <laughs> we can do it. We can do that. Oh, okay. Oh, we're gonna work on that tonight. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Who's Ethan? Yeah, Thomas Ethan, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, isn't Ethan the more sentimental one in the? Oh, maybe maybe Ethan. I think Milliman's yeah, Ethan. Ethan harder. Super sentimental, yeah. Was it? Yeah. Really yeah. Tillman's kind of more, you know. Yeah. You know. I think. I think Julie Delphi. I think. I think. Uh, yeah, right. It was Julie. I, I think, I, I, yeah, I think I think uh, I think I think I think Milliman is a uh, Ethan Hawke. Yeah, yeah Milliman looks like a romantic. Yeah, Tillman is. More yeah, Tillman. Yeah, <laughs> Milliman looks more of a romantic. Oh God! But uh, thanks for joining us with another Power Hour. Um, you know, it's gonna be fun. Um, next week maybe a little tricky of uh, be, be up in the Jersey City uh, next weekend for the for the race, Jake. But uh, we'll we'll figure it out. Uh, do something. Um, uh, but yeah, Jake, always a pleasure. Great uh, weekend of games. Looking forward to uh, you know our preview later this week. And um, yeah, just going to be fun, man. This is a home stretch. You know, next few weeks, uh, Selection Sunday is going to be here before you know it. And then you know we're off to the races with NCAA tournament. So always, always my favorite time of the year. Absolutely, brother. Uh, thanks again. Oh, shout out to Mark Hart uh, for coming on the pod, by the way, uh, earlier in the week. Uh, uh, looking forward for another bracketology as well with him. But uh, Jake, always a pleasure, man, uh, for everybody here. Uh, we'll see you guys out there. Thank you, folks. Stay hydrated. Thank you, President. <laughs>